Hello and welcome to another edition of A Glimpse Through the Veil. I am Gabrielle and I am your host. Tonight I would like to welcome the lovely Jane Dutry. How are you doing today, Jane? I'm just fine and you tonight? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Tonight I've asked you on here to talk about 2012. Um, Jane's website is www.janejanedotrydotherty.com. Jane is a very famous psychic. She's had her own TV show on TLC. She's got a book out. She's done a documentary. She's done a lot of stuff. So for our viewer, our listeners that don't know you too well, the ones that may not know you, most probably do know you, tell us just a little bit about yourself before we start talking about 2012, Jane. Okay, I used to be a high school teacher, and I've been a psychic, a professional psychic, probably close to 20 years now. And I've been president of the Jersey Society of Parapsychology here in New Jersey. I've been on all, over 150 radio stations. I have a book out called Awakening the Mystic Gift, and I was a star of a TV show called Ed Tenants. All right, and so... Tonight, I ask you to come and talk about 2012. Now, if you watch YouTube, like I'm a YouTube junkie, there's all kinds of crazy predictions for December 21st, 2012. I've had some famous authors on here about their books on 2012. And one day I was sitting and thinking, I wonder what Jane thinks is going to happen in 2012. I think I'll call and ask her. <laughs> so, <laughs> so tell me, what do you think is going to happen in 2012? Well, I, I really do think that we are uh, leaning towards some sort of an ending. I don't feel it's going to be the physical destruction, per se, as has been predicted. Um, I think, you know, there's, there's lots of theories out there as to what's going to happen. And I also have to mention that as a psychic, or, or as we attempt to make these predictions, that it's pretty hard to pinpoint it to, to, to just one day in a calendar. I think it might start the changes of what's going on. Now, I see and I feel that at that time we can have uh, UFOs here. Mm -hmm. That's what I feel is one of the changes is going to be. Now, I know in the Mayan calendar it ends. And what I like to think of in terms of and the way I see it is that we've all been moving towards something all these years as, as a projection. And a balance is what's most important. And I think as we get to that date, it's a matter of the balance that we've created as to whether there is an end, as some have predicted. And I feel that we've made enough strides, or enough people have, to create a balance of energy and for things not to be uh, a total physical destruction, as some have said. Mm -hmm. um, I feel that the, uh, the UFOs will be here, and I also feel that it is going to signal the return or the first time uh, God is here on Earth. Okay, it's four years and 74 days until December the 21st, 2012. You believe the UFOs will be here. So tell me what your thoughts are on UFOs. Where do you think they come from? Who do you think they are? Well, that's an interesting thing. I think that uh, we've got, just as we have light and dark here, I think we have light and dark on the other side. When I think we talk of UFOs, we talk of spaceships, per se, and that actually a spaceship could almost be in some way a construct of illusion. It may be something in the effect of how the other side may travel. I definitely feel that these are beings, and these beings have a direct um, relationship to God. All right. So you think that both the, the, the light, the good, and the bad both travel that way is what you're saying? Yeah, but there's light and, and bad on both sides. Okay. Well, you know, a lot of people claim to channel space aliens. They, they're channeling Palladians and all sorts of different ones. 
with different names. Is there any certain ones you that you believe are more credible than the others or anything like that? No, I'm not, um, you know, that versed in, in the particular ones that people channel. So there's not any that I feel one way or the other mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at this point anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about some predictions through 2012. What do you think um, with the elections? Who, who do you predict is going to win the elections? <laughs> <laughs> I think that right now is such swirling energy. There are some days that I will predict Obama. And there's other days I'll pick McCain. It, and it's not just what's going on, but it's, it's just feelings I've had from last year that I saw that this, would be something that was going to be a very difficult election to predict. It's, it changes. It goes back and forth, even in my own thoughts. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess a lot of people feel that way. I like McCain, but I see a Democrat in the office, so I predict we will have a Democrat in the office, so you guys can write me and say, I told you so if I'm wrong. But that is, <laughs> that is my, my prediction, um, uh. that we will have a Democrat in the office. Um, you may be right. You may be right. Um, it certainly seems that way. I think I rather, I don't know, I've got a certain kind of feeling that I had last year where I saw that it would be going in towards Obama and there would be a terrorist attack just before our election, which would change things. Well, people do like Republicans in office when there are attacks and whatnot, but People's pocketbooks are really hurting. I've never seen such hard times in all my life. Now, let's talk about that. What do you foresee for the U.S. economically between now and 2012? Well, it's kind of interesting because if you, you know, and I'm not a, a Bible person per se. I am Catholic. But uh, I recently read something in having to do with the book of Revelation Boy, and if it doesn't feel like that's happening right now, just with the collapse of the economic market, with the world markets collapsing, and, and, and things that have been said, it just feels like we are entering this period of revelation. And, and in some ways, that's scary. Um, so I don't like to go that way. I prefer, even though we're having that, I see the light ultimately being there. So we're going to go through some hard time now, but I do feel it's going to rebound. Mm -hmm. When do you think it'll start rebounding for those that are interested in stocks and whatnot? Uh, I think we'll probably start rebounding. I mean, we're going to start to see the trickle in about a month, two months. Still, it'll start to trickle. And then I think by this time next year, we should be in much better shape, and, and, and we'll start to see things escalating in a, in a positive way again. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I feel the same way. I know there's a lot of gloom and, and doom. You have, what, the Time Monks, I don't know if you've heard of them, who have uh, predicted that from... You're, you're the, I don't hear you. I, okay. You. The Time Monks, they have predicted from, like, October the 7th through... I don't know, through the t September of next year or something, that just all kinds of terrible predictions about our economy and how bad the world's going to be. But but um, I choose to focus on the light and the positive, and I, I think that it may bottom a little more, but I, I do think we're going to go back up gradually, and I think we're going to pull out from this, um, at least through <laughs> the middle of 2011, 2012, somewhere about there, and then we'll have some more bad hair days. But I just, I don't see the gloom and doom that they're predicting that we're going to crash and starve and all that. Uh, no, I, I, I tend to feel the same way you do in that sense. I just refuse to, well, let me put it to you this way. I'm going to say this. I've had some very unusual experiences. And I can't speak freely about them yet, but I've had messengers come not psychically, but in the flesh, back in 1996. And there were things that were told to me at that time. And that's one of the things that I do hold on to. I was told that as we approach, whether it was 2012 or as things began to happen in these changes that were going to occur, 
that things that were in the Bible were going to start to come out, but only parts of it. The way they explained it to me, that there are little bits and pieces of the Bible, the predictions of the doom and gloom and all of that, in order to get people ready for the coming changes in God's presence on the earth. And at that time, not only was I told that God's presence was coming to the earth, but the UFOs preceded that. Mm -hmm. So I've always held on for what it was been told to me that it would not be that physical devastation, although we are going to go through some aspects. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we're going through. Uh So the economic things, it's to scare us. Uh It's for us to perhaps turn more in a higher consciousness. And no question about the fact that when you're in economic um, problem, you're also starting to think on a higher consciousness level, too. You start to think of lots of things. Mm -hmm. So I think problems are designed to push us along and for our growth. And, but I do feel that we, it will get better. So, so you know what I think about the UFO stuff? I feel like everything I needed to know about Space Aliens Alert from that show V. Remember that old show? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm joking, Jane. You're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, there's a lot of predictions for them. You know, there's a lady, I think, isn't her name Blossom Goodchild? Have you watched those? those videos and people are talking about it everywhere she's predicted space alien landings for october the 14th of, of uh-huh, my birthday that would be nice <laughs> that's in about a week well happy birthday i don't see it happening but happy birthday thank you <laughs> i think it's very hard to be uh, exact in timing and that is the myth i think in psychic ability is people expect you to predict something to a certain date especially when you're dealing with world situations. Mm -hmm. And it's hard enough when you're predicting dates on individual people, and now you take that and you enlarge it even more Mm -hmm. to pick a date in the vast universe and our vast time. I think it's hard. Uh So um, I know they're coming, whether they're coming on in 2012 or that starts, they're you know, ascent here, <laughs> descent, I rather, uh, that's what I think will happen, is we'll start to see uh-huh. activity. We'll, we'll start to understand more. Well, the lady's very convincing in her video. She seems to really believe what she's saying. She's a, a psychic and a, and a channeler. But So so we'll see. Um, I don't see it happening, but, but we'll see. People make a lot of predictions, and sometimes I think they just misinterpret their symbols somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, that's because as a medium, that's really hard. A lot of our information comes in symbols. It don't come, you know, in words or letters. It comes in symbols. And sometimes it's not that we're given the wrong message. It's that we interpret the message wrong. Exactly. exactly. Mm-hmm. And that's what I have found personally to, to be the case. Well, what do you see as we go towards 2012 for 2009, let's say, since that's the immediate future? So you think that the economics are going to bail out. What about climate changes? What do you see as we approach 2012? Climate changes are are becoming more and more of a concern. I think that that's going to continue, but I I don't feel it's all because uh, man-made. I think that has to do perhaps with the magnetic field and and the shifting that's going on that's, that's starting to cause those changes. I do feel we'll have them, but I don't think there'll be a um, melting of the polar cap where we we all have water over us and all the tsunamis and things like this. Mm -hmm. Now, also, Jane, um, what do you think about 2012 and all of the predictions that have been made about the, um, the veil spinning do you feel like there's a thinning in the veil when you think back as a paranormal investigator? Mm. To I'm having your... such a hard time hearing you, Gabriel. Okay. 
What do you think about the predictions being made about the veil thinning between now and 2012? As a paranormal investigator, do you feel like it's really moving up? Things are faster, things are shifting, or do you think technology is just boosting that? No, I, I don't think it's just technology. I think that there is a real change going on. The, there is seems to be less and less of a veil, and I think that the combination of the two, certainly there, there's, there's more opportunity. There is a, a less of a veil between the two worlds mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think that as an investigator or as a medium? I, I feel it as a uh, medium. As a medium. You, you have to understand that when you investigate, you also use a lot of the technology. Mm -hmm. I, when I do it with the group, there's the technology, but I still keep myself totally as a medium. Mm -hmm. So I don't go into all the technology. Uh -huh. I, have to, I can only speak from my perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I, at the same time, I do feel with, within the field... I think that there is more technology that's being developed to advance the field technologically, mm -hmm. able to get more proof. I certainly think the spirit world wants to give us that proof. Mm -hmm. It wants us, you know, it, it wants everyone to know that they're there mm -hmm. and to uh, achieve that. So I do feel that there's a lot more that we're going to be able to do technologically to advance the field. Have you seen, I think it's called the Olivius, have you seen that? The what? The Olivius, have you seen one of those? Oh, I haven't seen that. Where it converts the, the, the numbers and the temperature and all that jazz uh -uh. into words. I'm thinking about ordering this one. I'm trying to decide. Um, I played with one for a few minutes. And it seemed like it cycled through. It kept saying the same words over and over and over. And I'm, I'm just trying to decide if it's worth the 200 bucks to get it or not. Oh, okay. <laughs> because the equipment, you know, it is pretty, it is pretty pricey, and we've, we've spent a lot. And so tell me, I know that you're also a paranormal investigator. And do you have any investigations going on or anything like that? Yes, I will be. I haven't scheduled any uh, because of my knee surgery, but what's going to happen now, I have a couple of uh, people begging me. There's one family uh, right now who just emailed me last night where they're not living in their house mm -hmm. because, the, the, because of all the strange activity going on. Yeah, wow. I've, I've let them know. I'll give them some pointers, but I probably can't get there until next week. Now, did you keep up with any of the families that you did the shows on with dead tenants, or, or did you not keep up with any of them? Uh, a few of them. What about the family that had the water coming out of the ceiling? I thought that was so cool. What Have you heard from them? Uh, yes. Actually, I'm doing a seance at their house. Uh, <laughs> <that night. laughs> well, that, that's good. Did they ever figure out where the water came from? No. Mm -mm. Wow. That's amazing. Have they had any more activity? Not in the in the, in the ceiling, but not long after that problem. What happened is the following year, the pool outside, which was brand new, it all it broke. It was something with the water from the pool. Mm -hmm. And we joked about it because I, I I did a séance. I usually do a séance there once a year, and we joked about it because it seemed to be a water problem that follows. We definitely felt part of this, I don't think we did on the show, but this was afterwards, it's her mother. Uh -huh. Her mother had committed suicide. Wow. And she didn't get along with her mother. Her mother was, was a pretty tough character. And I actually think that there was a seance I did where somebody came... And they also felt they had psychic ability, but what they did was was go beyond. And she knew the owner of the house, and she knew that there was a, there had been a problem with her mother, and the owner of the house really never wanted her mother to come into a séance. Mm -hmm. And this woman brought her in, and just started to uh, 
yell at her. It was a very tough situation. Mm -hmm. And I think that brought a lot of the negative energy. Well, you know, a lot of groups, especially paranormal groups, you're seeing a, a good bit more of them using mediums and seances and whatnot. And then you still see some of them who insist on, on not doing that and, and trying to do just the purely scientific method. And I've always said that sometimes you have to prove the paranormal with the paranormal. And I've yeah. noticed that groups that try to go purely scientific get very little evidence. Haven't you noticed that? Yes. You know, when I started years ago and I did my you know first uh, ghost investigation, you know, I was kept totally as the medium. Mm -hmm. You did it in such a way where the medium didn't know where she was going, and I had to walk around the house with a blank piece of paper marking off where I felt spirit activity, and then you compared it to where the family had, um, you know, it, uh, marked it off. So mediums were always used even in your scientific investigations. Now, you've got more technology today that's being used, but here's what I find the difference is. If you're going into a museum or an abandoned building or some historical place, the equipment works well. You're there looking at things scientifically. What I found in private homes sometimes, if a per like the one that I'm, I'm going to do, if a person is there hysterical and they're not living in the house, just confirming or not confirming that there's a ghost there using technology still isn't going to help that person know who it is or to give them some sort of um, guidance. Closure also. How's it going to give them any closure? Because what we get contacted with is a lot of people, They, ha I can think of at least three homeowners I've had recently that had groups in. Half of them didn't give them their EVPs or pictures, didn't hear from them anymore, didn't get rid of anything. So what was the point is what the owner said to me. Right, one exactly. One specific one recently and um, I'm making a trip this weekend to Asheville just for that. Right. And so, I mean, you see it all over the place. So I feel like if you go in, you're taking pictures, you're getting MVPs, you're invoking, and I don't believe in provoking, but a lot do. Um, I feel like you have a responsibility to those homeowners to give them closure as well, or to at least attempt to. Exactly. Exactly. I've also had, you know, emails from people who specifically are only requesting a psychic and saying, I don't want a group there. They don't want the technology part. Uh -huh. And it's because they want it, They want identity. They want to know, not that there's one there, you know, through technology, but to be able to help them determine who it is. They have specific reasons for it, uh -huh. which I also found interesting. Uh -huh. You know, it's it's... It depends upon what a person wants and the type of uh, haunting situation that you're involved in. Yep. We've got a couple hundred EVPs I have got to get posted, but we've done some wonderful work with, um, with question and answer sessions, and I just think it's so important to have a medium because um, that's, you know, that's when we, we get the answers we're looking for. And I just sure. think, I feel like that's really, really interesting. And I find as we go towards 2012 that the technology is just really increasing. There's just all kinds of new gadgets out. And you kind of have to decide, you know, you kind of have to pick and choose. But I feel like the older I get, the more I learn. You know, you become more seasoned in stuff maybe I wouldn't have done, you know, I do now. And stuff i done before, I, I wouldn't do now. And so, you know, I'm a lot less judgmental of other people's techniques and, and means as well. And that, that is what I have um, found to, um, to happen. So as we go towards 2012, well, let's talk about 2012. In 2012, the Mayans predicted that, the, that things would just end. They just stopped their calendar at that point. And a lot of people are predicting that's because it's the, world, the end of the world. You know, there's an asteroid. We have all the planets aligning and all that. So me and you are in agreement that it isn't the end of the world. It is a time of change. What do you, when you say a time of change, though, what do you really perceive that time of change to be, Jane? I think that there will be more people that are, have a higher consciousness. You'll have a better, how do I say it, uh, people will be nicer, in a sense. I almost feel 
I was thinking about it tonight also as far as just what does that year mean in some other ways. And there were thoughts that came to me. It's almost like like the end of the Mayan calendar. It may simply be the end of our choices if we haven't grown spiritually or we haven't been enlightened. I think at that point, the change will be we're going to be forced in some way. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's going to make the difference. I, I truly do feel that eventually we do have nothing but good on the earth. Mm-hmm. And, and evil is banished for a thousand years or more. Well, I think with all those planets in alignment, we probably will have some kind of magnetic pull yes. or some kind of weird um, ecological kind of something, something magnetic. Something's going to go on, you know, that way. Um, I don't think we're all going to die. I don't think everything's going to blow up. But I, I do right. think there is going to be some, some things that are going to be pretty chaotic. Right. Remember what I said when I said to you about these, the spiritual messenger. Uh-huh. We're going to have some devastation. We're going to have some flooding. We're going to have the earthquakes, but not to the magnitude as being predicted as the end of the world. Mm-hmm. You're going to have some of these activities to make us start thinking, mm-hmm. to make us start to become aware of what's coming down the road. Yeah. I can't say it's exactly in 2012, but I really and truly believe that Whatever God is, we are going to be finding out what what God is. Now, do you think crop circles are tied into 2012? I think crop circles are tied in to the whole phenomenon, and it can certainly be to 2012 if you look at that as a um, something to do with UFOs or extraterrestrials. I've always felt that crop circles probably emit an energy field that helps to raise the energy of the planet, just like I feel some music does. Mm -hmm. So I think in an underlying way, those two things are helping to increase the positive energy, Mm -hmm. create the balance. And, And remember, a prediction, the greatest power of a prediction is its ability to create change. When the Mayan calendar was created. I think at that time, what was a possible path was the end of the world. But there have been choices uh, along the way that have changed that. Uh-huh. Well, I also see it as a, more of the end of a cycle. Does that make sense to you? Yes. More of the end of a cycle. I don't see it as the end of the world. I see it as the end of a cycle. But just so you know, there's, there is some books written on 2012 and crop circles. And there's also a lot of YouTube videos if you guys want to Google it or YouTube it for 2012 crop cycle, circles. I may try to get some of those people on there. They have some very interesting theories as well. Very, very interesting theories. And um, what do you think about... Um, what was I going to ask you? Now I've just had a, a brain seizure here and have totally lost a my what? thought. A brain seizure. I just totally lost my thought for a minute. I was about to ask oh. you a question. I hear you. <laughs> and, and it totally um, left my mind. I asked you about the crop circles. Um, I asked you about the 2012. I asked you about the, the space aliens. Do you have anything else to say on 2012? I think to me it's extremely important to combat the negative thinking, because our thoughts have power and have energy. And I think that when we lose the hope and we start thinking of all the disasters that some are predicting in the end of the world, we are contributing to it going that way. So I think it's important to keep the hope and to see the positive, mm-hmm. and you you change predictions that way. Absolutely. Thoughts are magnetic. They've proven that. What you send out, somebody receives. So if you're sending out all that negative, the world's going to end, we're all going to die, 
Somebody's picking that up somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Whether it's a terrorist group with a nuclear bomb. You know what I mean? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so that's that's what I think. We need to take our thoughts, and if we are very negative and constantly in fear, we need to retrain ourselves how to think. Exactly. You know, um, I, I think the economic situation right now. Uh-huh, absolutely. At some level, you can almost look at this as a terrorist situation. Not that they actually went in there and did this, but the terrorists have wanted to see our financial system collapse. And they've prayed for it. You know, think of all that energy being sent to us. I hadn't thought about that. That is a very good point. Oh, yeah. You, you, you think of it that way, you begin to realize, oh, my God, they really got what they wanted. Mm-hmm. And, and that just from the energy, and I mean, they actually prayed for this. Bin Laden prayed for this. This, this, is, this is their goal, is our financial collapse. This was the goal, and this was um, two years ago. I don't know if you knew about it where you are, but after a while I I knew about it here, and I I have to say I didn't know psychically per se. It was through other measures that I knew that at the end it began with the Jewish holidays, which we are in now, to um, the election. At that time, unknown to us, there was more terror chatter at that point. And the goal was to collapse New York and the financial situation. Mm-hmm. There was a plan that was averted to blow up the tunnels and the financial institutions. There was some even in New Jersey that were targeted and in New York, Wall Street, all of that. Now, they may have not done it physically where they blew up, but on another level, it sure had happened. Have to have you come back sometime and talk about things like psychic vampirism okay. and psychic stalking and and those kind of things. They're all kind of weird and and different. Um, it's just very very odd, odd subject material. <laughs> but but it it is true. People do do stuff like that, and, and it's very bad. But on the upside, we can kind of change it because we can think positive thoughts and. And see our economy doing better, and, and you know, taking positive actions by, you know, by helping our economy in different ways and supporting, supporting our, our leaders and encouraging them to do the right things and praying for our leaders as well. Yes, absolutely. And, and keeping hope and and visualizing the positive because this whole collapse, you know, it, it was, it got help from the terrorists on a on a energy level. Right. Now, Jane, if somebody wants to contact you, you do do readings. So yeah. if somebody would like to contact you for a reading, how do they go about that? Probably the best way is through uh, email, which is my name, Jane Doherty, D-O-H-E-R-T-Y, at Comcast.net. All right. And if they want, so if they want to email you, email you, that's how they do it. All right. Then go to my website and email me that way also. But, uh... Probably right now the easiest way is email, because I can email at 3 o'clock in the morning. I can't call uh, we, at that time. We also have Jane's um, website linked to our radio page on easternparanormal.com, and I'd like to thank her. I'd like to thank you, Jane, for coming. Hang on. Very welcome. My pleasure. I want to speak to you for just a second, so hang on. Everybody have a good night. Um, next.